Does a narcissist actually regret what he did to you? So many people are wondering this and asking, does he actually regret? I want to bring you back to some of my story and some of the things that happened in my journey. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, healing, growth, and transformation. Trying to be able to provide opportunities of sharing insights into my life and to some of the experiences that I've had. Then bringing transformation into your life, teaching and showing people how to heal from narcissistic abuse, how to actually be free from the mental and the emotional like addiction that happens to a toxic person that has you cycle back to him over and over and over again. If you struggle with this at all, I want you to reach out. Go to rawmotivations.com. Would love to talk to you today to see how I can help you move forward in the healing process. When we bring up this piece of regret, I want to bring you back to some of my story. There was a part of my story that I showed up in a very abusive and a very toxic way. In doing so, I had multiple affairs, cheated on my wife multiple times, and gaslit, lied, manipulated, emotionally abused her over and over and over again. I don't say this because I'm proud of it. I say this because you need to hear the reality of it. Throughout that time and while those things were happening, there was zero regret. There is zero remorse. There is zero aspect of like, well, I probably shouldn't do this. Now, do not confuse this with there not being guilt and shame. I want to I want to pull these apart just for a second. Narcissists struggle with guilt and shame, period. Guilt and shame, it's the underlying like factors that are underneath narcissistic personality disorder that a person is running from. A narcissist, shame avoidant, 100%. Simply because he's trying to avoid the things that are incongruent about what he's putting out there. So I would have a mask or a version of myself that I would put out there saying, this is who I am. But that wasn't true. So I would be avoiding it. I'd be running away from that actual image because that image wasn't true at all. The reality underneath the surface was that I was an abusive asshole. But I didn't want people to see that. I didn't want people to know that because there was shame, which is why I didn't do it to every single person. How I treated people was completely different. I treated my wife completely different than I treated the affair partner. I treated the affair partner completely different than I did someone in the workplace or my boss or various people, friends, family. All of this was based on running away from shame. Shame in who I knew I was internally, even though what I was putting up externally was different. So there was this piece of shame and guilt that was still in my life no matter what. The difference was I was trying to avoid it, run away from it, compartmentalize, dissociate away from it, do anything I could to box it up and push it to the side because I didn't want to deal with shame in my life. But then we talk about this piece of shame and guilt. Sometimes people think, well, maybe that would mean regret or remorse. In the moment, none. Because I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to acknowledge it. Therefore, I would push it away. Narcissists are great at doing this thing called compartmentalization. Growing up, I knew that I did this, but I didn't know a big word for it. I just boxed things up. I would view these boxes inside the warehouse of my mind, and I would take a person and put it inside the box and be like, well, don't have to deal with that person anymore. I would take a feeling and put it inside a box and be like, well, don't have to feel that anymore. And I would do this multiple times to, quote unquote, protect myself from the feelings, the vulnerability, the sadness, the guilt, all those different things would box up. Well, this piece of regret, then people kind of wonder like, does he actually regret? Is this a piece that's part of the MO that's happening with the narcissist? And frankly, typically no, not at all. Simply because the regret piece means that I have to acknowledge that I did something wrong, which activates the shame and the guilt, which I'm already avoiding and trying to run away from. So I'm going to believe whatever reality I have to believe so that I'm not wrong. Then regret also comes into the sadness of like, wait a second, I did this to another person. Now, a lot of narcissists have empathy. Bear with me for a second. You're like, wait a second. I've always heard narcissists have no empathy. No, what you've heard is a confabulation from what actually the DSM-5 says, which says narcissism lacks empathy, is unwilling to acknowledge and identify with the feelings and needs of others. Notice it doesn't say they're void of empathy. And the second half of that proves that they have empathy, but they're also unwilling. That's a big piece. And a lot of narcissism people don't want to acknowledge is actually a choice. A choice, to be honest, a choice to abuse, a choice to do the things that he's doing over and over and over again. The thing is, he's unwilling to make a different choice because of the shame, because of the guilt, because of the, that piece of vulnerability is weakness. He's unwilling to make a different choice 
and actually choose positivity over abuse. So inside this piece of regret, there's this piece of emotion, empathy, and feeling. Narcissists have feelings. They're not void of feelings. Now, if you get to a psychopath or a sociopath, yeah, okay, we might be talking a little bit different when we're engaged to feelings. But we're just talking about a narcissist. Inside this piece of narcissist, then the empathy piece has to come down to, I don't want to deal with my feelings. That means when my daughter is getting upset and when she's having big emotions and big feelings and I feel it well up inside me where I'm frustrated and pissed off at her, it's because I don't want to deal with my own feelings in that moment. Maybe it's simply the feelings of being inconvenienced. Maybe it's the feelings of like frustration. Maybe it's it's all different types of things. But oftentimes when that is happening and there's that trigger that's happening that's welling something up inside of me, it's because of stuff that I haven't dealt with yet because of my own emotions, because of my own feelings. But most narcissists feel that and project. Most narcissists feel that and run because they'd rather do that than actually do the internal work because the internal work is not easy. Internal work, the vulnerability, the honesty, that stuff is the hard shit. Like that stuff is the hard stuff to deal with and work through and process and look in the mirror and be like, is that really who I am? I don't want to acknowledge that. Let me just pretend to be this mask, this version. So when we bring in this piece of regret, narcissists don't regret because they don't want to feel sad about it because they don't want to deal with their emotions because of another person's emotion. They don't want to deal with their own. There's also this piece of the sadness, okay? Like I just mentioned, the the sadness of the regret, sadness that I did something, sadness that I hurt someone. In those moments, there was none, okay? In those moments, there was no aspect of that because I felt entitled. Another aspect about narcissistic personality disorder is the entitlement, feeling uh, like just entitled to other people, entitled to what they give, entitled to what they do. And this entitlement piece oftentimes comes with a chip on the shoulder, oftentimes come with like this, this uh, self-serving aspect of like, look at me, I'm so amazing. Look at me, like I'm serving. Like there's so many different pieces of it. But the entitlement piece basically is like, hey, I'm entitled to you and I'm entitled to what you do and I'm entitled to what I want, whatever I want, et cetera, et cetera. This is why the majority of narcissists think that they already own you. He does. Like he thinks he owns you, which is why he said to you, you can't go out and be with someone else. Like you can't leave me. We're soulmates. You're always going to be bound to me. He said different things. You've seen it. Maybe not to all of you, but you, you have seen it. This piece of him thinking that he owns you, that he's in control of you. That's the piece of entitlement. Entitlement happens, and as a result, regret gets pushed to the side. Why would a person regret doing something to you if he was entitled to you already? This is the mindset. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm just saying it's, it's messed up, but that's the reality of what he's thinking. If your sole purpose is to serve him and you do a crappy job of serving him, then why is he going to feel bad that you left? Or why is he going to feel bad that he cheated on you? He's not. Because he's only viewing you as being a servant and a slave to him of what he actually wants in the moment. When you don't give what he wants in the moment, well, see ya. This piece of regret doesn't happen inside of narcissism because he's not willing to actually see and view you for who you actually are. The hard part is you take that and you hold that and you think, well, because he doesn't see me, then I don't have value. Because he doesn't value me, then I'm not worth anything. Because he doesn't show up this way, then I'm not good enough. And this is where we get confused and where you start giving your value appreciation to someone else. You're not a house that someone comes in and evaluates. You're a human being. means your only evaluator is actually God. Like there's not another person that can put a value on you. And as a result, when you're talking about God, he labels you as priceless. So the fact that you give and abdicate your value attribution to another person that's where we fall short because you've already said, hey, you can value me how you want and I'll believe it. When in reality, he's not going to regret how he treats and how he interacts with you. So he's going to do whatever and say whatever to make you feel less than so he can feel better about himself. All the time of the abuse, all the time of the manipulation, all the time of the cheating and the lying, there is never this piece of like, I regret it. And inside the initial part of the healing, it was probably one of the hardest questions people asked. They were like, do you regret it? And I was like, I know it was wrong and I know I shouldn't have done it. And I, but I couldn't tap into like the sadness piece, like the sadness piece of actually like feeling it and like, like actually like the pain of it. That was the hardest piece for me to tap into because initially it wasn't a piece that I thought about. 
Like it was a piece that I thought, well, this is just how it is. This is just what happened to me, et cetera, et cetera. Playing the victim, all these stories in my mind. So it's taken a long time to be able to work on rewiring my mindset, actually looking and viewing other human beings as being valuable and precious and amazing. Because if I don't do this, it's easy to slip back into a place of being like, well, I'm just entitled to what I want, when I want it, how I want it, et cetera. That's the thought process. That's the mindset that kicks off really fast. Hopefully that makes sense. This whole piece of narcissist regretting, there, there's, too many, there's too many loaded angles with it that people come to the table. Oftentimes looking for them to regret, always, oftentimes looking, being like, if he regrets it, then uh, maybe he'll change. If he regrets it, then maybe it shows me that I have value. All of it oftentimes is looking towards the other person for validation perspective, when in reality, we need to validate and, per and have the perspective of you, your growth, your development, your transformation right here, right now. If that's a piece that I can help you with, then I want you to reach out. Go to rawmotivations.com today. I want to be able to show you a video of what I do and how to help you move forward. Check it out. If it resonates with you, then click the application below and let's talk. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. See you on next day.